And I just thought Werewolf by Night was a wonderful one-off from Marvel Studios. What was it like becoming part of the behemoth that is the MCU, (laughs) even for just one episode? It is that. Um, I mean, I, like you, I'm a massive Halloween fan. That was actually the main draw for me. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> okay, fine, it's Marvel, whatever, but it's a Halloween movie. <laughs> yes, definitely. So, you know, I was I was really into all of those old Universal Monster movies and the Hammer Horror movies and all of that stuff growing up. My sister was a real goth and she used to watch them all and I would, I would, you know, be forced to watch them with her, but I loved them. And so when I spoke to Michael, our director, and he said that he really just wanted to pay tribute to those movies, then I was all in. I mean, so much fun. I mean, I, I yeah, the aesthetic is so wonderful. Like you say, the old Bela Lugosi, Boris Karloff movies of the past. But I mean, the attention to detail, even down to the little cigarette burns in the yeah. corner of the screen, the old yeah. ones where it's like, change the reel, change the reel. Um, oh, it was great. Is that it, though? Is it one and done? Um, I can't say anything (laughs) for certain because I basically don't know but I what I do know is that there is very much a plan to open up this supernatural and monster side of the universe and obviously at the end of Werewolf by Night things are left very open as to where things can go in terms of um, the characters and also the story in regards to the Bloodstone and all that you know there's a whole history in the Mm. comic books around the Bloodstone and and, um, what that will mean going forward so I don't know what the plans are if there are any plans but there's certainly huge potential there and I would do anything that they ask me to come back and do so. (laughs) <laughs> I, I i'd hope so as well i mean obviously like the uh the response from the fans if it was just one and done i think there'd be an outcry a bit like when you you uh, departed outlander after the first three series people were like what what <laughs> like it, 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 people were like this is unacceptable so i mean your portrayal of elsa bloodstone has just been such it's had such a positive response Oh, thank you. Yeah, I I mean, we were, um, you know, me, Gael and Michael, I think we're all just hugely thrilled and surprised by how big a reaction it got, because for us, it didn't feel like we were filming something that was part of this massive Marvel universe. We were in a studio in Atlanta for you know, I think I was there for a total of five weeks and I think we only filmed for three of them. And, you know, it felt like this tiny little passion project of Michael's. You know, it really felt like we were making this little B movie with these practical sets and, you know, and everything on it was practical. So it didn't feel like we were part of this huge thing. And it was really only once it came on to Disney Plus and I saw it there alongside all of the other Marvel projects that it really kind of sunk in for me that that's, you know, that we were part of that. So, you know, the reaction has been amazing. And I think that what people have really loved about it is that it's a really fresh thing for the MCU. Yeah, I mean, it is. I mean, is it, is it, is it wrong to say I love the violence? I think maybe I loved <laughs> it so much. <laughs> I think I was just surprised. I'm like, this is part of Marvel and our limbs are being severed. And it's like, blood I mean, the fight. everywhere. And... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't yeah. know there was going to be so much blood either. You know, when I watched it and obviously there were so many parts of it that we were just leaving up to Michael's imagination. And we didn't know that we're going to be in there. Like, as you say, the cigarette burns, things like that. And the blood was one of them because it was, a constant conversation on set was how much blood are we going to be allowed and you know it was always trying to find that balance between making it proper halloween gory scary and obviously you know keeping it um within the the mcu world and yeah i think it was later on that michael just kept going further and further with like the blood splatter on the screen and all of that stuff and they <laughs> they were just let him so <laughs> I mean, uh, Michael Giacchino, uh, like this is his biggest directing gig so far. He's known as a composer. To me, he's known as the man who has made me cry more than any other in the history of cinema. I mean, that score for Up, obviously he won the Oscar for it. But God, I mean, I don't know whether I love him or I hate him because that (laughs) montage in Up, it's just like... Traumatic. It really is. It's like, why? How? Oh, my God, this is insane. So, yeah, I mean, how was it working uh, with him? Because, like I said, this is this is the biggest thing he's done in a director's chair yet. 
Yeah, but I think the thing that I loved most about it was when he was able to bring a sense of that um, uh, that that history that he has of composing music because he was able to, you know, provide little bits of the score he was planning to use uh, whenever he was directing certain scenes. So, for example, at towards the end when Elsa's walking down the corridor to to Jack in his werewolf form and she's not sure whether he's mm -hmm. going to leap on her or what's going to happen and michael was just able to play me the music that he had composed for that moment and so, so this is this is the vibe that we're going for and that helps so much as an actor because that is it's so much more useful than words you know he could he could describe with that one little piece of music so much more than he could have if he talked to me about the scene for 10 15 minutes and i loved that he had that available and then you know i think it also in terms of the storytelling of the piece as a whole, like the the rhythm of it, the way the story um, where it slows down, speeds up in places, just the 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 overall shape of it, I think is it makes it really clear that Michael has such um, an expertise in music, and mm. just to me that 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 was really obvious whenever I watched it. But yeah, it was it was so much fun being part of something that he has wanted to do since he was a little kid. I mean, I've seen now some of his, I don't know if you've watched the um, Director by Night documentary uh, that backs up Werewolf. And it, I watched it a few nights ago and it is just the most gorgeous documentary I've ever seen because it speaks to Michael's, you know, his passion for directing and how he had wanted to do that all of his life and you know making mm. werewolf movies at the age of eight to now <laughs> you know being in this situation so it was really just a privilege to to get to be part of that for him that he's wanted to do for so long i hadn't even considered that but yeah of course that's such a unique experience to have a composer directing able to actually play the music to set the scene that's that's fascinating that must be such a yeah. a rare thing for an actor it's incredible and i've always used music myself for a performance i've you know whether it's on stage or you know I, i'll be sitting in my dressing room before i go on for certain scenes listening to certain pieces of music because that's the quickest way to put me in a headspace to put me in an emotional space and music is so powerful in that way and um hugely important for me in, in what i do so to have somebody that can just support that and provide for it is really really special